Girl, it has been a day and I can already tell that I'm gonna hate how I look in this, but let's get into it. Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria. I am a 24 year old woman of transgender experience and I make all kinds of content here on YouTube from reactions to commentary and femininity content like this. So if that sounds like fun to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can join the family and never miss out on a new upload. Today, I'm feeling like a little girl chat. I got my coffee going. I was gonna do like a wine girl chat, but baby, it's noon, so we're going with coffee. And I want to talk a little bit about hygiene. Now, I am going to make an entirely other video about hygiene down there as a post-op trans girl. If you guys want that, let me know. I don't know if it's a little too niche, but let me know. So in this, I'm really going to be focusing on hair, skin, and scent. I feel like those are three things in your hygiene that are really important for really anybody, but especially for someone wanting to present as a feminine woman. I do have to say the obligatory disclaimer that I am not saying you have to do these things to be a woman. I'm not saying that you are not a woman if you don't do these things. I'm just saying as a woman of transgender experience, I know a lot of us want to unlearn some of the traits that we've learned from our birth sex or maybe you were a tomboy or whatever. These are tips to make yourself feel more feminine and to make the world perceive you as a more feminine person. I don't make the rules, I'm just telling you. So if that sounds good to you, keep on watching. But before we jump in, we do have a word from our wonderful sponsor over at Catch beauty. Hi there! If you know me, if you've been following me for a while, then you would know that body hair removal and permanent body hair removal has been a huge roadblock in my transition. For years, I had to shave my arms and my legs every single day if I wanted a smooth result, and I had already spent thousands of dollars hand over fist at salon and electrolysis lasers on my face and my bikini, so I was just not interested in spending that money on my whole body. So I did some research, and that is when I found Cash Beauty's at-home IPL laser hair removal device. This laser is my top recommended method of permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction. I, like I said, used to have to shave my arms like every single day. And you can see here, I have no hairs. The ones that I do are like blonde hairs that wouldn't be picked up anyway. With our IPL handset, you can get salon quality results at home for a fraction of the price. Also, it's in the comfort of your own home and you can use it anywhere on your entire body. Instead of booking a section for your calf and then your thigh and then your tummy and then your chest. Girl, you would be in a salon for years. On top of their incredible products, I really love what Catch Beauty stands for. They have been supporting the trans community since day one, providing us with resources. Catch Beauty wants to help us through even the hairiest parts of our transition. So whether you are trans, not trans, man, woman, somewhere in between, if you want permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction, I highly recommend you click the link in my description box down below. Check out the Catch Beauty at home IPL laser hair removal device and use code ROSE to get money off your order. Thank you so much to Cash Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. And without further ado, let's jump into feminine hygiene. All right, hygiene. Hygiene. Oh, hygiene. Yeah, hygiene. Oh, hygiene. <laughs> Hygiene is something that absolutely everybody needs to do. I'll just let you all know. So basic things like shower, brushing your teeth. They're not even gonna be in this video because everybody should be doing that, but these are some tips to sort of give you a leg up to maybe if you were just taught to be clean, but not necessarily like extra soft, feminine, shaved, exfoliated kind of clean. This is your guide to that. Touch this skin, darling. <laughs> Touch this skin, honey. Touch all of this skin. By the way, I don't know if I said at the beginning of the video, but I got my coffee. This is a half calf because I'm on our new medication and I'm like super sensitive to caffeine. Let me know if you guys are joining me with a coffee or a wine or anything else. Okay, so we have three sections to go through and let's start off with hair. When it comes to hair, in addition to being clean, you want it to be soft and you want it to smell nice. Not everybody's hair is going to look the same. There are all different types of hair from straight to coily to curly to wavy. There's all sorts of things. So make sure that you look up your particular hair or skin type and take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm trying to make these tips as generic as possible so that everyone can relate. So starting off, washing your hair every single day is actually very damaging for it. And I highly recommend a against washing your hair every day. Every two to three days, maybe I try to push it to twice a week or once a week. Now, if you have thicker or curlier or coilier hair than me, that can be pushed out longer. 
Uh, for me, it just really gets a little bit nasty at like the one week point. So that's when I make sure I wash it. I know a lot of people will say like, well, my hair gets so oily, so I have to wash it every day or every two days. I get it, but your scalp is so used to having that stripped cleanser on every single day that it's overproducing the oils. So for me, this is like day like four hair and it's in a ponytail, but that's not grease, like that's shine. My hair still looks great and before I had to wash my hair every day. So you'll get used to it, but in the meantime, I do love a dry shampoo to kind of just get myself looking clean and happy. Another tip that I love for my hair, if I'm trying to push wash day down, I work out five days a week. So of course I sweat and I sweat like a pig girl. I sweat so bad, oh, I'm sweating right now. It is not warm in here and I'm sweating. But I like to, after my shower, after the gym, I'll like wear my hair in a bun or with a little shower cap. And then after my shower, I will get my blow dryer on cool and hit my hair in the roots to kind of dry it off. And then if I need to, I'll go in with my dry shampoo. And you know what? If all else fails, a ponytail or ponytail braid or a bun will work just fine. It's gonna be better for your hair. You'll get used to it, I promise. And it's gonna be so much better for growing your hair out. Now on the days in between wash day, you're still gonna wanna make sure that it's it's soft, that it's, you know, touchable and smells nice. I love to refresh with a leave-in conditioner. Now, I love this from Shea Moisture. It's their like miracle leave-in, whatever. The bottle is so nasty, so you know that I really use it. But whatever it is, add a little bit of oil through the ends of your hair or use like a scented leave-in conditioner. Do not spray perfume on your hair because perfume has alcohol and that will dry your hair and it can cause it to break off. So I really like to do maybe like some essential oil in some avocado oil through the ends of my hair, like a rosemary, or more likely, I just use the scented leave-in conditioner and it smells so good. When you are ready for wash day, make sure that you are washing every section of your head. If you're a trans girl, you would know that before you'd be able to just get some shampoo and run it through your whole head. If you've had short hair, you can just run it through really easy. As it gets longer, it's harder to get to all the areas. So I like to focus on dividing my scalp into four sections. So down the middle and then like, back and front. I make sure that each quarter of my scalp is fully massaged and shampooed. In fact, I have a tool that I'll show you right here that I use and it just uses it to sort of massage my scalp and really get the shampoo in there and get away any dead skin cells. And when you're conditioning, whether you're doing silicone free or silicone conditioner, I am personally sulfate and silicone free and I make sure that I get it through every one of my strands, I avoid the roots, and I squish to condish. So you get all the conditioner in, you gather your hair up and just kind of squish it just so that you know that it's really swishing around in your hair because you want to just coat every single strand. And then I'll just tie it up, do whatever, like shower and shave, which you'll see in the next section and I rinse it out. Getting out of the shower, please dry your hair with a cotton t-shirt. No more towel, oh girl, I almost spilled my coffee, let's not do that. No more towels, no more harsh rubbing on your head. That's gonna cause so much breakage, it's gonna cause so many split ends and frizz, it's not good. So get a cotton t-shirt, dry your hair with that. I usually, maybe with my towel, I'll do a gentle, you know, squeeze just to get some of the excess water out. And then I dry my hair off with the t-shirt and put it up in like a little turby twist with the same t-shirt. And once your hair is dry, whatever it is that you do, whether you're doing a diffuser or you're straightening it or you're blow drying it, you're letting it air dry, whatever it is, once it's dry, when you go to sleep, first of all, don't sleep with wet hair and sleep with your hair in a protective style. So whether it's in a pineapple on the top of your head and a braid, whatever, just keep it from being down and all over you because that's just gonna cause a lot of breakage. So now we've talked about the hair and the next part of the shower comes the skin. When we think about femininity and a feminine appearance, the first words that come to my mind is soft and smooth. You want to be supple and curvy and soft. As someone born male, I acknowledge that male skin and female skin are different skin and you're gonna have a harder time being moisturized and soft and amazing. Estrogen and hormonal placement therapy will help tremendously with smoothing out your skin and acne and all of that. But I also really pride myself on being well moisturized and soft and delicious. delicious. So I go above and beyond and I am so silky smooth at all times. People of all genders experience acne and dry skin, but acne is not 
something that makes you look masculine or feminine. It's just something everybody experiences. So if you are struggling with acne, I highly suggest you go see a dermatologist if you're able or look up ways to help your particular skin type. But not everybody has the time or the means to go see a dermatologist. So what I personally use on my skin. As my face wash, I use the CeraVe Foaming Cleanser and underneath that, I will use anything the ordinary. So once in a while, I'll use an AHA BHA exfoliator but typically I will use their alpha albutrin and hyaluronic acid, as well as their niacinamide and zinc complex. I love those both. And then I'll add in a little bit of retinol. I know me rattling off all of those ingredients it can seem really intimidating because, and it is, I mean, it's a lot of like medical language and you're like, girl, I just want a face wash. You don't need all of that. Just get a basic face wash and moisturizer if you're really into that. Research each product, see what works for you. But basically my loose understanding of retinol and retinoids is that it helps to replenish your skin. It helps to uh, speed up the cell turnover. So things like signs of aging or acne or acne scars, that really helps with uh, your skin turnover. Now you should be wearing sunscreen as well but I'm not gonna lecture any of you guys on that because I literally sit in tanning beds like once a week, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's okay, I'll just like get a facelift when I'm like 70 or 80 and look like Joan Rivers. Oh, I also love Stridex pads and Starface stickers. It's just incredible. In one of my video, actually in the ad at the beginning of this, you see me with like a little yellow thing. Someone commented like, why is there mustard on your face? And like, girl, it's a sticker. <laughs> Exfoliate. Trust me, exfoliate. Whether it's a physical or a chemical exfoliator, do something, not too often, but definitely something to get some of the dead skin cells off and to make your skin look a little bit more bright and glowy. Also, if you are somebody who shaves your face daily, I don't always recommend this to everybody, but using a gentle exfoliator like the St. Ives Green Tea, which I know everyone hates, so don't listen to me, but a little exfoliator, even like a face cloth or something with your face wash to exfoliate the area of your face before you shave. It's going to give you a much closer shave. It's also going to help get any ingrown hairs out so that you can take care of them and it reduces razor burn and ingrown hairs. But now for the whole body, I shower every single day and for my skin, I have an exfoliating like face cloth that I replace like probably not often enough, but like very frequently. And I'll use that with just my Dove Sensitive Skin Soap and I'll rub it all over my body. Now, occasionally when I'm feeling a little bit extra and I want extra exfoliation and extra scent, I will use these babies here. They are so wonderful, they smell incredible and they get your skin so smooth and polished. Whether you shave or not, do everything you do in the shower and come out and while your skin is still damp, apply your lotion. I use like a thick one, like, um, Eucerin or Lubriderm lotion is great to lock in moisture from a shower or whatever, but if you're putting it on top of your skin, it's not really doing anything other than just sitting on it. So while you're still damp, not dripping wet, but like just gently dried off a little bit, go in with your lotion all over your body. I'll let that sink in. I'll do like my moisturizer and whatever else. Then after I'm all dressed and ready to head out, I will add on my elbows and my knees, sometimes my lips and a little bit under my eyes. I will add some Aquaphor, just a little bit, enough to lock in anything that would be on my skin. And let me tell you, that works incredible. You can cover your feet in it and put socks on and go to sleep and your feet will be the softest you've ever seen in your entire life. life. Or after about like a week or so of applying get the big tub by the way get the big tub vodka for and apply that everywhere incredible product or Vaseline, but I think I personally prefer Aquaphor. But there is a step between the lotion and the Aquaphor that is crucial for making your scent last all day. Girl, you want to always smell good. You want to smell divine. I've talked so many times about how important scent is and the psychological effect that it has on everybody around you. So I'm going to spill some of my secrets on how I always smell incredible. First off, I did not always smell incredible. I had some issues with my teeth. 
I had bad dental hygiene, I had bad hygiene in general, and you know, I've struggled with depression and addiction, and those things really took a toll on my scent. Also, just like my general well-being and health and sanity and family and friends, but yeah, no, my scent is definitely the most important thing that got affected. <laughs> so first things first, uh, take care of everything health-wise. So you're gonna smell differently, whether it's your sweat, your mouth, your whatever is going to smell differently if you're not healthy. So make sure you're healthy. I had so many cavities and like issues with my teeth. They're all good now. I've been drinking coffee, so maybe they're a little nasty. <laughs> but yeah, I have gotten that all taken care of and I am very much up on my dental hygiene now. So like I said, every day I will shower and exfoliate my entire body. Now, I like scented soaps are nice for the experience in the shower, like those exfoliators and stuff, but I then layer on a bunch of lotions and fragrance, so it it doesn't really do anything for me. So for that, I just use an unscented soap. I don't love how most lotions smell, and the ones that do smell good, like Bath and Body Works or something, aren't actually doing that much for your skin. So I also go with an unscented lotion because my primary scent that I want people to take in is going to be my perfume later on. That being said, I do like using those as like a hand lotion, like in my bag or my nightstand over there. Sometimes I'll have like a Victoria's Secret lotion just because I don't need that much, but it smells really nice and it makes me feel good. But my biggest big sister tip, let me have a sip of coffee for this because- they ask you how you are you after your shower, when you get out of the shower, while you're still damp and you moisturize your entire body, go into your bedroom, wherever you're gonna get dressed and get ready. Let that sink in. Let the lotion and everything sink in. Maybe get dressed and start doing your makeup. Once it's sunken in, synced in to your body, then spray your perfume. Now I like to spray here, 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 and I dab together. Depending on if I'm going somewhere and I wanna smell great, sometimes like between the chest and then sometimes like the knees or the thighs or something like that. And then what you're gonna do, this is how it lasts. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna get more lotion or aquaphor or whatever that's unscented or matches the scent of the perfume that you just put on. And you're going to lock it in. You're gonna get a little bit of aquaphor and you're just gonna keep it on there. And even if you don't lock it in, perfume will last longer if it's on something that is moisturizing to the skin. So like a lotion that will make it last longer alone. But then doubly locking it in Girl, you're gonna smell incredible all day long. Now, when you are looking for a fragrance, there are a few things to know when in the market. So there are, there's a scale of least scented to most scented perfumes. So it starts off with eau de toilette, which is something that you can really just spray in a room or like whatever. Then there is a body spray, and that is typically considered an eau de parfum, but really just a body spray. So like the, Bath and Body Works one is a good example that it just smells really nice for a couple seconds, but I sprayed it earlier and I don't smell it at all anymore. Then there is Eau de Parfum, which is most perfumes that you get. This is one of my all-time favorite scents. This is the Giorgio Armani My Way, and this is an Eau de Parfum. So this is something, typically you're not gonna find a straight up perfume, parfum, in the stores, at least in the United States. Eau de Parfum, I think, just means that it has alcohol in it. It's so good. Basically, the higher up you get on that scale, the more expensive it's going to be, but also the longer it's going to last. I have made a body spray, like a Victoria's Secret body spray that's a little bit more scented than the Bath & Body Works ones. I've made that last quite a while with the uh, sealing in trick, but it's not gonna do the same thing as every other scent. Also, by the way, hold on, still not sponsored, but please, this Victoria's Secret Bear, oh my God. It smells, this, if you follow me, follow me for a while, you would know I've been looking for this one perfume everywhere and I couldn't describe the scent. Oh my God, and it's this. Oh, fuck, it smells so good. <laughs> it's just, it smells girly and like hot. If you're ever out, at like the Victoria's Secret, whatever, spray this uh, like on you, wait a while, let it sink in. It like adjusts your body, supposedly, but it smells so fucking good. Now, in addition to having a signature scent that you use after the shower, I like to have just body sprays or even like perfume samples everywhere. 
I have them in my car, I have them in different purses, I have them in my house, I have it in my nightstand, I have them literally, I would keep it in my office if I had an office. Like, I have them everywhere just because you never know if like, you know, I go to the gym a lot, sometimes I'll go get my nails done right after and I don't have time to shower and I'm like, girl, I'm gonna, like, I don't wanna smell bad. So have it on you just for like an emergency situation or if you wanna smell extra good for like a special someone, then do that. Now I did write a whole section on taking care of her down there as a post-op trans girl and like dealing with health and scent and all of that, which really all, girls with that down there have an experience with. Really everybody with anything down there has an experience with, but that's gonna be a whole other video. I wanna do a whole like post-op maintenance routine. But if you are someone who tucks, make sure that you are changing your gaff at least once a day. At least once a day, if not twice a day. Put on a new gaff right before seeing a trick. Like you need, so if you're making your own gaff like I did for I don't even know, probably like six years or something. You need so many of them. You need so many of them, or you at least need to be doing laundry so frequently because having, having your like organs that are really one of the more potent parts of your body constantly just sandwiched as tight as possible against your body, that area gets really warm and it gets sweaty and it's not gonna smell good. I'm being so straight up right now, I can't believe I just said that, but it is so true, and not everyone talks about it, so have like a million gaps. I would suggest even getting a little bit of scented baby powder and putting just a little bit, not much, because you don't wanna like cake it on, but just a little bit down there before tucking to sort of keep you dry. I think my last tip when it comes to scent is don't overdo it. And I know, <laughs> I know I'm kind of being a hypocrite right now because I just told you to do all of these steps and now I'm like, but like, take it easy. <laughs> you would rather have no scent at all than be like, whoa, someone's wearing a lot of perfume. Cause it smells nice, but too, there's such a thing as too much of a good thing. So your top priority should be that you are clean and that you are fresh teeth brushed, deodorant on, body showered. Then focus on the perfume. Don't overdo it. If you have a partner or something or a friend, have them tell you how you smell because after a while you can't smell it anymore. So you add more, but it's like, like the Giorgio Armani one that I was using. Girl, the, my first time wearing that out, I put on like two or like three sprays, did my makeup. And then I was like, huh, I don't smell it anymore. So then I added like three or four more sprays. In the car, Chris was like, babe, I gotta roll the window down. There is too much of a good thing, and the same thing goes for makeup, same thing goes for clothes, same thing goes for everything. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, make sure that it applies to you, and don't break the bank. You really don't have to. Just take care of yourself and spend the time to really pamper yourself. All right, everybody, that was episode four of Femininity Boot Camp. This was a little bit less, like, aggressive in the other ones, but if you wanna see those videos, I will link them right up here as well as down below, and I'll put this in a playlist on my channel. If you have any suggestions for future videos, whether it's femininity or reactions or anything at all, including anything you wanna know about post-op kitty care, then please let me know in the comments down below. I love to hear from you. You are all amazing. Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and until I see you next week, good luck, I love you, bye.